Can you try to put in context like what one individual can do for a lineup, for a team, for you? Yeah, you know, missing a guy like Soto is, you know, a generational player. You know, what he can do at the plate is just incredible from the walks, the power, the clutch hits. You know, but adding him to this lineup, it just gives us that extra depth. Like, it allows us to have a little deeper lineup. And, you know, I love having him and Volpe in front of me where those guys are always on base, they're always making something happen. And, um, you know, it hurts, but we're hoping to have him back here soon. All right, so you're still a young guy, and yet you're the captain, and there's a presence. And I've heard from people that people like Soto, as great as he is, are loath to, like, disappoint you. Like, do you feel what your role is on this team and how it's evolved, certainly within that clubhouse, as far as people looking up to you. And, and even without you saying something, just kind of following the leader. Can you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's with any leadership role, it changes over the years. It changes, you know, even as a rookie, you can be a leader. You can, you know, lead by example on the field. You can, you know, this what you do on the field, um, you know, showing up every single day playing. But as the years have gone on, you know, you got to step up into a role where sometimes you got to maybe speak up, sometimes you got to maybe pull a guy aside. Maybe, like you said, sometimes just give a guy a look, like, hey, let's go. So it's uh, it's fun, though. I love that part of it. You know, but I think that's what makes makes a team and you know makes everything whole. And have you got like is that something you were always comfortable with? Did you have to get comfortable with it? Does the C force you to be comfortable with it? I just try to be myself. You know, I think that's one thing. You know, talking with with ownership, talking with, with Jeter, talking with other guys. Willie Randolph has been a big help. He said, hey, don't change. You, you're in this position for a reason. Don't change who you are. You're, you know, you're a leader. You lead by example. You do the stuff in the clubhouse. Just keep doing your thing and good things will happen. You're a sports fan, right? I mean, you love sports. Oh, yeah. So you grew up in the Bay Area. You rooted for the Giants. You were like wheelhouse age when Bonds was doing Bonds things. So let, let me just throw these numbers at you. Go. Last 32 games, Aaron Judge. 409, 17 homers, 39, 1553 OPS, highest OPS any major league player over a 32 game span since Bonds in 2004. <laughs> you remember that you were 12, like that is like your, I mean, I imagine he's your idol at that point. Like, he's yeah, got to oh, yeah. go wrong. Yeah, he was, he was incredible. He made the game look easy. Um, you know, we just got done playing in San Francisco, and he made that park look small. And I can guarantee you that park is not small. I hitting BP, I tried to go out like right center where he was easily going out. Right. And it was, I couldn't even get the warning. But did track. you hear that? Judge last 32 games since Bonds in 04. And by the way, highest OPS Yankee player over 32 games since somebody named Ruth in 24. Like, you. Yeah, it's. It's absurd, but like I said, a lot of credit goes to this team and the guys that got around us who are getting on base, causing havoc to where the pitcher's just not focused on me. He's worried about Volpe maybe stealing. He's worried about, he just threw 10 pitches to Soto in front of me. He's battling, he's giving him his best stuff. So it's, it's definitely a team effort. I'm just trying to do my job, you know, just get on base, drive guys in when I can, and uh, hopefully keep that 30 games and the 60 games and the 100 games and the 162. So. Here's a weird one, do you believe in ghosts? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, I mean, behind you, you know, when you're in center field, you get all these. You ever have a, ever hear, ever have a conversation even to yourself with somebody like Gehrig or Ruth or Mantle? You ever feel their presence out there? I know they're definitely at the old stadium. They're definitely at the old stadium. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely some ghosts here, but no conversations yet. No conversations yet. So, uh, I think they'll be. As the season goes on, they'll keep talking. I'll hear them. I love that. Um, Alex Verdugo, I know you put your arm around him when he first got here. Um, he's been terrific. You know, the the, um, the ability to get people to buy into a culture is critical. Is that an important part? Because certain teams will go after certain guys to make sure it all works. Is that a difference in this 2024 edition, do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think. You always win with people. You gotta have good people in here. You gotta have good players. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, in this in this world now, we got analytics, numbers that can tell you different things about players. But when it comes down to it, you gotta have the right people in the in the right spots. And you know, a guy like like Doogie, man, I've been talking to a lot of people upstairs. Like, hey, we need to get this guy in pinstripes. I'm tired of seeing him do some damage against us. You know, with the Red Sox and 
Uh, he's been great, man. That guy's a stud. You know, I can talk about what he does at the plate, how he works at count, hits for power, hits for average, puts the ball in play, but I've been so impressed with him on defense. You know, playing left field here at Yankee Stadium is basically like playing center field. There's so much space out there. You got 399 to your left. It's a uh, it's a big task to ask, and uh, you know he stepped up right to the plate. And it's just been impressive how much how hard he works on the field. He gives it his all. He'll run through a, a glass wall for right, you, like we right. saw the other night. So, yeah, he's been one of my favorites, one of my favorite teammates coming over here, man. And you know, hoping we can, hoping we can keep him pin track. So we had a meeting with Booney, and somebody asked, um, "Is this the best version of Aaron Judge you've ever seen?" I mean, he had a think. He's like, well, I mean, he hit 62. He kind of carried us. And to me, it was like asking, after Tiger Woods won his 10th major, is this the best version? He just won nine. He's going to win more. Like, how do you feel at the plate? Are you more comfortable? Because like Volpe and others, you, you do get better as a player. Like, are you better than you were two years ago, last year? Feels like a natural progression. I hope so. I, ho right? I hope I'm getting better. You, you work know, at it. Just, yeah, it's just... Continue to work, continue to improve. You know, that's where, you know, it's lucky to be surrounded by so many great people. You know, coaching staff here, uh, players here that every day we're just pushing each other. We're trying to get better because we know our ultimate goal is to win a championship and bring it back to New York. So, you know, satisfied with one good season, satisfied with some records, you know, that's, that's not what we're here for. You know, you come to play in New York, you come to play uh, here for the Yankees is to win championships. So I think that's always our, our biggest motivator and, you know, biggest motivator for me every single day. All right, sports fan. Outfielder, Mookie Betts, Gold Glove right fielder, now shortstop. Otani, pitcher, unbelievable hitter. Like, which which is more impressive? And please don't say they're both incredible. I know they are. Is there one, maybe given that you're an outfield, that's that blows your mind away? You know, on, honestly, what Mookie's doing. You know, I, I'd understand how hard it is to play out here in the outfield. He's won multiple Gold Gloves. And then just to be like, all right, I'm gonna go back to playing infield like I did coming up with the Red Sox and not only second base, but to move to shortstop, which is one of the toughest positions in sports. Man, it's it's fun to watch. You know, I don't like seeing them make those diving plays on us and throw our guys out, but it's 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 impressive to watch just how athletic you gotta be to do that. I sense you, you know, Pat Riley wrote a book, The Disease of Me. You, you really don't like to use the word I or me, do you very much? I used, to get, I, I used to get fined in, in college if we did interviews and we said that. So I kind of is that right? I kind of got ingrained in us. So it's what a uh, great idea. No, it was, it was wonderful. You don't have too much cash in uh, in college, <laughs> so it uh, it runs out quick. Uh, the C, lastly, the C. How important is that to you? What, what's the what's the significance to being the captain of the Yankees? Yeah, it's probably one of the biggest accomplishments, you know, moments of my life. To be honest, you know, I. Got drafted by the Yankees and they took a shot on me back in 2013 and you know worked my way through the minor leagues, learned the history of this game, you know, see all the great, you know, legends of this game that came before me and what they did for this organization in this city, and then to get a chance to, you know, be named captain, you know, yeah. be in the ranks with some of those guys, it's just uh, it's it's tough to put into words. You know, I just want to live up that. to their legacy and hopefully leave a legacy here and pass on yeah. to the next guy that comes up. And is I can see team. that. And, you know, you, you've said a number of times, I was really close. So to, to, I was close to going to San Francisco. I, I was, like, what is, how do you define that? What does close mean? Like, looking for houses, saying to your wife, like, you know what, it's happening. Like, well, what does that mean? How close is close? I, I, it's a hard well, one to Well, I understand. think becoming a free agent makes it pretty close. You know, you're a free agent, yeah. now you're not with the team, and, uh, you know, growing up in California and, you know, taking the visits, seeing different teams, it's, you know, it gets a little real once you start meeting with people and they kind of start showing you different things. But, you know, once you got a chance to talk with Hal and kind of told him, express how I was feeling and, you know, told him what I wanted to do, you know, we were able to line things up and, and get it done. And, you know, I think I'm not where I'm supposed to be. It's a legit tug of war, though. Yeah. It was a legit tug of war. Um, lastly, being selfish, home run derby, is there any chance, like, 72 degrees inside, no humidity. We've hit a couple big homers there, I think, in Arlington. So um, let me let me think on it. Let I me think you. on it. I love you for thinking <laughs> on it. Thanks for doing this. I really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate it.